Hey guys, ZFX Bro here, and today we've got a wonderful tutorial for you guys on rotoscoping. And I want to point out that we have a article posted in the link below that will guide you through the different softwares that you can use for rotoscoping. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using After Effects and Mocha, which are great for rotoscoping. However, there are some other softwares out there that you might find interesting as well. So go ahead and check out that article in the link below. I'm going to start off by explaining a little bit about what rotoscoping is for those of you who don't know. And I'm going to go over some tips that will help the beginners as well as the advanced users on improving their rotoscoping because as most of you know, rotoscoping can take a long time. It's often tedious and there are several ways that we can go about saving that time and doing other things that we like to do. So for those of you that don't know what rotoscoping is, it's the process of which we manually alter footage one frame at a time. And there's several different types of rotoscoping. We can use rotoscoping for rig removal when we're removing wires from scenes like if you've seen The Matrix, they use wires for that. And they use rotoscoping to remove those wires. Uh, more recently, we've seen a lot of stereoscopic conversion, which is when you go out and see a movie in 3D, if it was not shot in 3D, for example, the Titanic is going to be released here pretty soon in 3D. And they're able to achieve that 3D conversion with the use of rotoscoping. We've also got green screen compositing, split screening. Sometimes we see color correction done with the use of rotoscoping. But today we're going to be going over holdout mats, or what most of you may know as masks or alpha channel because in After Effects we call them masks. So there's a couple of ways we can go about creating a holdout mat and we can either use extraction in which case we're taking different channels of colors and we're keying them out in order to make our mat or we can use roto splining which is where we're making using our mask tools our bezier or adding our points and using that to create our mats. We're going to be using both After Effects and Mocha because they work very well together and can save us a lot of time. So those of you who aren't comfortable with Mocha, I'm going to be going over the use of Mocha that will hopefully make you comfortable because it's a super useful tool and it comes free with After Effects, CS4, and above. So definitely a tool you want to take advantage of. People in the professional visual effects industry use Mocha all the time because it's such a powerful tool. So let's go ahead and get started here. So for this tutorial, we're going to be bringing up a half a dozen or so different tips throughout the video that can really help with the amount of time that you spend on rotoscoping. So go ahead and take a look out for that. We're going to go ahead and start off with our first tip, which is before you start rotoscoping, you really want to study the clip, play it over and over again, just so you can get a feel for what the motion is, what you're going to be rotoscoping, and decide what the best route to go about rotoscoping that shot would be. You're going to look for natural points of motion, cycling motion. A lot of times you may want to add keyframes to your mask every five to ten frames or so, but you're really going to want to look for shifts in direction. And so go ahead and take some time to look at that and study that. So our first shot here we have is a clip from a music video that I got the wonderful chance to direct. And we have here a shot of this guy dancing. We're going to rotoscope the shot because there's quite a few challenges. Some of you may be familiar with the Keenan and Kel show from back in the day. This right here is Kel from that show. I believe there was a rumor floating around that he had died, but he is definitely not dead. So here he is doing a sweet dance move, and we're using the shot not only because we can see that we've got this light behind him that's going to make for a difficult roto, but we can see a ton of shifting movement in his different limbs. And so we're going to run through what I thought was the most efficient way of rotoscoping this shot. So we can see here that we've got his hands moving, his arms moving, his legs moving, and even the camera moving. So let's go ahead and get started here. What we're going to be doing is making different mats for each one of his limbs because often you may be tempted to rotoscope the entire body with one mask. That almost all the time is not the best way to go about it because you may end up spending way more time than you need to be and that is just not the best way to go about it. We want to create rigid masks that are applied to separate parts of the body so that we can save time and allow the computer to help us out as best as possible because really the goal here is to have the computer do as much work as possible. So we have here the shot and what we're going to do is we see that we have a lot of contrast here with his arms and the background. 
um, on the left side. That's going to be easier to rotoscope out, but on the right we have some more problematic darker areas that we don't see a lot of contrast between his arm and the background. So what we're going to do first here is we're going to what is called an extraction map. And so the way that we do that is we're going to find difference in the color values here. And what we want to do is start off by looking at our different channels and seeing where we have the most contrast. So if we take a look at this guy here, we've got our red, our green, and our blue channel. And it looks like our green channel might have the highest amount of contrast, at least on this side. Yeah, it looks so. We're going to go to our green, and we've got a really solid amount of contrast here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our effects, and with this green selected, we're going to type in Colorama and apply that right here and we can take this off of our green channel we can go back to our regular and we're going to go to our output cycle and we're going to change this to ramp green so now you can see we've made our footage into values that are between green and black and so we're going to click here hit ok we're going to black make drag this to absolute black hit ok and now what we can do is crush our values so that we create a nice mat so we're looking to create a mat on this side right here and there we have a decent map on the right side pretty good okay so now what we can do is apply shift channels to this map right here and we're going to take alpha from our green and now we can see here that we have a nice mat and what we can, we're going to do now is actually invert our alpha And now we have this nice mat applied to our footage here. Wonderful. Okay, so we've got that. And we're going to just title this his right side. Because that's his right side. And we're going to drag this right underneath. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into Mocha here real quick so that we can... So let's go ahead and jump into Mocha here real quick and use the planar tracker to help out our solve here. So what we got, we're going to do is go create a new project and we're going to choose the clip, same clip, hit OK. Super simple. And now what we're going to do is we're going to apply a tracker to him here and we want to track his body. So we want to find the core of him where we don't see his arms pass in front of anything. So right around his abdominal area, we can apply this planar tracker. And we're going to go to our view, and we're just going to go to our default layout. And we're just going to have this be applied to our translation, nothing else. So now, really simple, just hit track forward. And we can see that's tracking on there real nice. No jittering around like we would have found if we used a point tracker in After Effects. Super smooth, super nice. And so what we're going to do now is go click on Export Tracking Data. And we're going to use the After Effects CS3 corner pin, which supports motion blur. Hit Copy to Clipboard. We're going to go back into After Effects here and now go Layer, New, Null Object. We're going to go ahead and apply, hit Control v here. And we've applied that tracker now to him. And you can see it's sticking on there real nicely. Now what we can do is hit Command-Y. We're going to create a new mask. We can make this one yellow. And we're going to also call this, we're going to hit OK, and call this the right side mat. And now what we can do here is apply a mask to this guy. So we're going to hit our tilde button so we can zoom in here. And we're just going to apply this mask to his right side here. And there we go we click that on we can see what we've got there and now we can take this right side drag it directly underneath 
and we're going to make this an alpha mat. And so now if we were to solo this, first we're going to parent this. We're going to take this right side mat. We're going to parent to our null object here, which we're going to call this our right side motion track. There we go. And now we can see that it's moving along with it. Wonderful. Okay, so now what we're going to do is look in here and we can see that we've got this garbage coming out here once it gets to this point. So what we can do now is keyframe this position. So what we want to do here is look for the moment that it starts to move off into all of this stuff here. So we're going to see that it starts right there around frame 16. So we're going to hit M for mask. We're going to select a mask path. And now we can drag this to the point where we can see that it starts to stop. So we can see it starts to stop right here and then move back. So what we can do is drag these points and just move them off to the right here. We're not going to worry about our hand because we're going to make a different mask for that. Right now we're just worried about the right side of his body. And so we're going to drag that and that and all of that. So now let's take a look here and see that we're not getting a whole lot of that extra detail there. We are getting a little bit here so we're going to continue to drag this off to the side and we can see here that his leg comes out so we want to make sure we give enough space for that. Again hitting our tilde button is a very helpful tool and we can just scroll through this now. Continue to drag this off. Okay, so now if we click off here, we can see that we have his right side, a pretty clean track on his right side. There are His limbs do extend into the edge at some points, but those are pieces that we're going to fit together later on down the road. So we've got that. And now we can take a look at his other side here. What we're going to do is actually apply a track now to his head so we can really take a look at some of the features in Mocha.